Welcome to the Dryway installation video. Before we start to install your Dryway system, let's make sure we have your cabinet built right. The cabinet for Dryway in most cases should be very simple, using end panels and a top. Here are the critical design requirements to understand. First, the Dryway system mounts to the underside of the ceiling of the cabinet. Be sure to adequately support the ceiling which needs to be made with a solid 3 quarter inch material. The easiest way to attach the ceiling is to use cleats on the side panels to screw the ceiling up into for a sturdy, clean looking install. Secondly, in order to guarantee that clothes dry properly, no doors should be put on the cabinet. Since the dryway system is going to be in use most of the time, the door would have to remain open and tend to get in the way. Thirdly, it's best to not use a toe kick or cabinet base. Removing the toe kick gains 3 to 5 inches of critical drying space and makes it easier to get clothes on the frames. Cabinet makers prefer to make a cabinet box that can be delivered to the job site and easily installed with a few screws. But a fully assembled dry away cabinet is so large that it is difficult to get into the house and into the position. So, building the cabinet with end panels on the top on site is easier and more functional. Also, run your flooring under the cabinet for a beautiful finish and easy cleaning. Let's review the critical dimensions for the inside of the cabinet. They can also be found on the website by going to the install tab and viewing the installation instructions. The inside depth of the cabinet is 30 inches, which is not a typical standard depth in cabinets, but needs to be 30 inches deep, so your clothes have enough room to spread out. The frames are 29 and a quarter inch deep and use the back wall as a stop. The vertical height from floor to mounting surface should be between 90 and 96 inches for optimal use. The frames including hardware are 85 inches leaving open space below. The inside width varies based on the number of frames you want to install. Dryaway comes in 2, 4, 6, and 8 frames. The top rail on the front can have the maximum reveal of one and a quarter inches to allow the frames to pass by. Finally, using cleats at the top of each side panel, screw the ceiling panel up into the cleats for a clean finish. The most frequently asked question about dry away is, will my clothes dry inside the cabinet? The answer is yes. With all the dry away frames fully loaded, your clothes will dry pushed in out of sight and out of the way. That's the main goal of dry away. Clothes will dry at the same speed, pushed in the cabinet as they would in the middle of that same room on a typical accordion rack. The humidity level inside the cabinet is the same as it is in the middle of that room, allowing evaporation to occur at the same rate. Now that your cabinet is ready, installing the dry away system will require some of your own tools. Assembly works best using two folding tables covered by moving blankets to build up the frames at a working height. Other tools you will need are listed below. Once you have your table set up, you can put the boxes of dryway on top of the tables, spaced out so you can work on each end. Cut open the first box, which should contain the directions, template, and mounting brackets. Then, each box has the parts to make two frames with the list below. The bag of hardware should contain the list below plus one extra spare for each type of hardware. The first installation step is to determine the loading side for assembling the hooks to the sliders. Clothes can be loaded and unloaded from both sides of the dry away frames, but the logo side of the frame looks nicer, with the slider hidden on the other side. If your washer and dryer are located on the left side of dryway, as shown, you will want the left side load with the slider on the right side of the frame next to the wall. Assemble hooks to sliders. Lay your slider out and orientate the hooks and assemble as shown for a left side load. The screws should be inserted on the inside of the slider. Add the hook to the outside of the slider and secure with a lock nut. Make sure that the hooks are squared up and all positioned the same. The hooks should be tightened so that the hooks don't move but also don't over tighten. For a right side load, reverse the slider direction. Remove the inner member of each slider. 
Pull the slider out all the way and pinch the black plastic release to continue pulling the inner member of the slider out. Lay them next to your frame parts to match the proper assembly direction. Now we're ready to install the mounting brackets. Measure the width of the back wall at the ceiling to find the center line for dry away. Mark the center line on the back wall just below the ceiling. Measure 26 inches from the back wall on the ceiling and mark the center line for the front mounting bracket. Attach the template to the ceiling mounting surface. Put two pieces of tape on both ends of the mounting template where it says, Tape. Starting with the back, line up the center line on the template with the mark you created and tape the template tight to the back wall. Slide your hand on the template forward to remove slack and attach the front of the template matching the other center line mark you created. Drill pilot holes with a 332nd inch drill bit. Drill the pilot holes a quarter inch deep where indicated at the back and front of the template on the mounting surface. Remove the template. These are the middle holes for each of the mounting hook brackets. Attach the back mounting hook bracket with a provided one and a quarter inch wood screw in the center hole. If there is a layer of drywall between the brackets and the solid panel, then use two inch wood screws to make up the difference. Position the mounting hook brackets so that the large openings in the brackets are on the same side that the sliders will be on for the best visual look. With your drill, screw the center screw in semi-tight. Position the bracket so that it is parallel to the back wall and tighten the center screw to hold the bracket in place. Drill the remaining pilot holes with the same drill bit and secure with mounting screws. Attach the front mounting hook bracket. Repeat the previous process. Only after attaching with the middle screw, take two of the sliders with the hooks squared up and the inner members removed and insert them into the outside hooks, one left and one right. Wiggle them front to back to find the even position for the bracket and then tighten the middle screw. Finish off the other two screws with the same pre-drilling process. Important. Remove one of the sliders from the hooks to minimize the chance of it falling and injuring you or damaging the floor. Without the frame attached, the slider doesn't hang vertically and can easily fall out. Build out a frame by laying out the four pieces with the ends on the blanketed tables. The side members have a longer space at one end, which is the top. Screw the metric M6 flathead screws into the four corners of the frame with a cordless drill or screwdriver. Add the spacer rod with the metric M5 long flathead screws. Don't over tighten with the drill. Finish all screws with a number two screwdriver to minimize the chance of cracking the frames. Attach the slider inner member to the top of the frame. Flip the frame over and line up the holes in the slider member with the three pilot holes at the top of the frame. Determine which direction the member should face. Starting with the center hole, screw the number six flathead wood screw in. Be careful not to over tighten. Finish with your number two Phillips screwdriver. Add a rubber O-ring to one end of each rod by rolling it on one quarter inch from the end. Insert the other end of the rod into the hole side and the O-ring side into the slot side of each frame. Normal adult clothes will allow five articles per frame. With three holes between rods, the six spacer rod can be used for smaller articles by moving the rods above and below. Install the frame onto the slider by holding the frame with one hand in the middle of the top section and the other hand holding the slider vertical. Before inserting the frame, be sure that the slider members are pushed in and the roller bearing is at the receiving end. Repeat until complete.
Enjoy your driveway. If you should have questions, feel free to call driveway support at the number shown.